December has been a big month for Bitcoin. And at this point, investors might be feeling a little like the hodlers down in Whoville, who decked the halls, prepared the roast beast, and awaited a magical Christmas season for their portfolios. But when the hodlers were asleep, all snug in their beds, with visions of Lambos dancing in their heads, market volatility came in like the Grinch, plummeted the price of Bitcoin, wicking all the way down to 42K. That's right, the last thing the crash took was the log for their portfolio's fire. On their walls, it left nothing but hooks and some wire. Like the Who's who woke up to find Christmas has been stolen. When the hodlers saw their portfolios, they didn't panic. They acted like they had seen a market crash before, and in three days, the price recovered back up to 50K. One question remains, will the hodlers down in Whoville be heard actually singing about their portfolios this Christmas season? Let's get it. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. My name is Ben. Every day on this channel, I show you how to make money in crypto. If you like money and crypto, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to go deeper into crypto, make sure to check out bitlabacademy.com. On Wednesday, digital assets were discussed in a full committee hearing in front of the U.S. House Financial Services Committee. Representatives finally got a chance to ask questions and clarify concerns and CEOs of major crypto companies like Coinbase, FTX, and Circle were able to testify about what crypto is, how they want to see it regulated. The memo for this hearing outlines Congress's concerns about crypto, namely stablecoins, investor protections, and market integrity. The government is concerned that since crypto markets have no overarching regulatory framework, investments in digital assets are vulnerable to fraud, manipulation, and abuse. Ron Hammond, Director of Government Relations, sent a tweet that this hearing shows a large majority of members are turning a corner in understanding crypto. You must watch the channel. It seems like a major focus of this hearing is determining not if the crypto market should be regulated, but who should regulate it. Capturing this sentiment in a tweet, Ohio Congressman Warren Davidson stated that it's Congress's job, not Gensler's, to make crypto law. He also asked a poignant question, who will protect investors from the SEC? CEO of Coinbase USA, Alicia Haas, wrote in her testimony that Coinbase is recommending an SRO, or Crypto Self-Regulating Organization, to regulate the crypto markets. The testimony also states that the federal securities laws that date back to the 1930s, none of the categories are a good fit for digital assets. Many CEOs in the hearing believe that crypto assets like Bitcoin need to be integrated into the current financial system. For crypto to truly thrive, it must be regulated as a hybrid model of existing financial framework, not an extension of what's already there. As they see it, a single designated regulator is the solution, and a new framework for regulation is required. Almost like they've been listening to me for the last several months and years. They believe this change will enhance transparency, protect against fraud and manipulation, and promote efficiency and resilience in the crypto markets. The hearing touched on many issues like access for the unbanked, Web3 and its potential to cut out the privacy invading middleman and many of the things we do online. How Bitcoin mining can become more environmentally friendly and reduce energy consumption and the need for a new purpose built tax code. It also showed the need for competent leadership when it comes to crypto regulation. Just take this gem from cul-de-sac head Brad Sherman talking about crypto and sounding like an absolute moron. The number one threat to crypto currency is crypto. Bitcoin could be displaced by Ether, which could be displaced by Dodge, which could be displaced by Hamster Coin. And then there's Cobra Coin. And what could Mongoose Coin do to Crypto Coin? How is this good news for Bitcoin? Well, instead of crypto markets being misunderstood, which leads to uncertainty for speculators and new holders, Congress and the general public are learning more about the fundamentals of Bitcoin and other assets. More knowledge about crypto means more informed investors and more suitable regulation. Although it's becoming more resilient, the price of Bitcoin is still affected by news and FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The more safety and understanding there is about why investors hold digital assets like Bitcoin, the more new investors will have the knowledge base and tools they need to enter the space. Sounds like a win-win. Bitcoin mining is making headlines with a company called Foundry, a subsidiary of our frenemies at the Digital Currency Group. 
has created a new resale marketplace for reselling crypto mining hardware. Foundry X has secured over 40,000 miners ready for resale in 2022. They believe they know the market well enough to match buyers and sellers and generate accurate pricing. Supply chain issues have affected miners as well, making it difficult for mining operations to get equipment. Through their resale marketplace, top of the line mining machines such as MicroBT and Bitmain can be delivered immediately to miners looking to upgrade their current operation. Foundry can customize size and payment terms based on needs and can facilitate financing, logistics, and pooled mining through Foundry USA Pool. This mining pool giant represents 16% of the network's total hash rate. Compass Mining launched a resale market in November, and they have reported hundreds of millions in revenue on the secondary market. And what's new with Bitcoin ETFs? Well, recently the SEC announced the rejection of the Van Eck ETF. The reasoning was in line with past rejections by the SEC for ETFs, rejections that date back to almost 10 years ago. Uh, hello, Dirty Gary Gensler. Lots changed in 10 years. And this is why CEOs of major crypto companies want a crypto self-regulating organization to handle the direction the crypto will go from here. Grayscale wrote a letter to the SEC outlining the discrepancies it saw in the rejection of the Van Eck ETF. They believe rejecting on ETFs on the same grounds that ETFs were rejected 10 years ago doesn't take into account the significant regulatory and competitive developments since 2017. The hearing in front of Congress on Wednesday was also very telling. Big companies want crypto regulated. And they have some pretty convincing ideas on how this should be done. Instead of waiting on the SEC, companies like Fidelity have decided to launch their own ETF in Canada. On December 2nd, Fidelity Canada announced the launch of its ETF under the tickers FBTC and FBTC.U. The Fidelity ETF tracks the performance of Bitcoin spot price. 98% of the Bitcoin purchased by the funds are stored in cold wallets. Registered accounts, like tax-free savings accounts and registered retirement savings plans, can offset or reduce capital gains tax by using them to invest in ETFs. Using registered accounts to buy Bitcoin-backed ETFs can be seen as a major future incentive for traditional investors to get exposure to BTC. The more crypto can be merged with traditional finance, the faster it can be adopted by investors who only know the old fi way of making gains. Fidelity is not the first fund to use the Canadian stock market to launch faster. In September, ARK Invest recently tweaked their $5.7 billion ARK Next Generation Internet ETF with the ticker ARKW so that it can hold crypto through Canadian ETFs. The future of Bitcoin spot ETFs are still unknown, but one thing is becoming clear. Bitcoin ETF funds and major crypto CEOs are looking for a new path to regulation, one that bypasses the SEC and better understands crypto assets. The new sentiment surrounding Bitcoin is positive again, with new people finally understanding the digital asset space and ideas for fair regulation are being discussed. Yes, Bitcoin crashed last week. Once again, it showed its vulnerability to news, but the price's quick turnaround and recovery also showed its resilience. There are three commonly agreed upon news-related reasons for the crash, the Fed, the variant, and just the plain old holiday season. The Federal Reserve talking about tapering the rate it accumulates new assets on its balance sheet with, and also its announcement that inflation should no longer be called transitory, was the first news-related hit to the Bitcoin price. The announcement threw some fear into the market that the tapering will cause a correction. Then the new variant was announced, throwing some uncertainty onto not just the crypto market, but the stock market as well. Then the doubt, because tis the season, and as corporate ambitions are slowing down to holiday pace, retail investors doubt if they have enough for the holidays and their investments, money flows into the crypto market have slowed. Yep, we saw some FUD thrown onto Bitcoin, and then we saw the crash. What we saw this time that was different than before, though, were confident investors who acted like they'd seen a crash before. From here, we will have to watch technical analysis and news to know exactly where the price of Bitcoin will go. Many analysts are seeing the $52,000 level as an important one to break, stay above, to continue seeing a bullish price trend. Others are calling for a period of price consolidation following such a major correction. 
Institutions weren't scared. In fact, Kathy Wood of ARK Investment just called Bitcoin as having a 988% upside between now and 2026. Will we see a half million in the near future? I believe we will someday, but the timeline remains to be seen. What's important is that market sentiment is looking good, and the price of Bitcoin is becoming more resilient to what's happening on the news. Yes, Bit Squad, the Grinch tried to steal Christmas, but when he stopped to listen to the crypto market cry, boo hoo. Instead, all hodlers, the tall and the small, were hodling without any gains at all. Maybe Bitcoin isn't something the world should ignore. Maybe Bitcoin, perhaps, means a little bit more. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out.